couldn't really wait. So I went ahead and took a wire wheel and paint stripper to this area right here. Well, uh, I've never seen a rust encapsulator do that before. We're gonna have that cab sitting on that frame mocked up to see what we're gonna have to do with the firewall. So don't go anywhere. We're not done yet. What's up guys? Today we're at Columbus at the Good Guys Car Show. We just ran into our friend Blake with Sweet Patina, which is really convenient because we're using his stuff. We're actually using the blackout rust preventative to do the frame on the F-350 before we drop the cab for the 41 Ford on top of it. So don't miss out this week. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and join us here on Cross Start Garage and Salvage as we work to get Caitlin's 41 Ford up and running before her 16th birthday. <laughs> Probably not gonna happen. Get some merch, yo. We're gonna try. Well, last week we took the cab off of this thing, and this week... We're picking this Ford's nose. Nope, we're draining the fluids from the front end so we can <laughs> remove everything you see up front here. Anyhow, we gotta get that done so we can get this whole frame wire wheeled and cleaned up to be painted. Let's get it done. What's your plan? Just try and break it. Stuck if it's melted. Camera down. That's stinky. Because it's burning rubber. Where's this going? It's gonna go right here on the ground. If Whew. That has been a long time coming. Oh baby. All right. Well, couldn't really wait, so. I went ahead and took a wire wheel and paint stripper to this area right here. And that's basically what we're looking for all over the chassis, outside and inside, unfortunately. Caitlin? Well, like most days around here, we're in a bit of a hurry, so I kind of messed up. I should have got some before shots here, but. We've got some degreaser blown in here on everything. You can just see how nasty all of this is. You can at least see the condition of the front of the oil pan right here. The bottom of that oil pan is just flaking off. There's just rust flaking off of it and it's just seeping through, which was a known issue with these. So this is gonna be a problem here. Um, these shock mounts, these spring mounts here are, um, well, not in great shape. We can't paint it if it's not clean. So we're gonna give it the best we can. panic mode last night because two months ago when we started this I thought yeah I got six months to do this now we got four months and I'm going yeah I don't know how this gets done but we're gonna make something happen the wiring harness that ran the rear lights and trailer lights and all that stuff that, that whole wiring harness the loom that goes through here we're gonna have to strip that out we're gonna disconnect the fuel lines drop the tank and then basically back here where the vice grips are holding that rear brake line shut we're gonna cut from there and remove the brake line all the way up through there. So I think we're gonna leave the fuel lines because they still look like they're in good shape. I need you to just take all the hoses, electrical connections and everything off the top of that. There's like six there, seven there. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, sweetheart, there's 
99 ways to do it almost right. You ought to be able to find at least one of them. So. This one's really rusty. Here. Don't strip the head off of there. Put a bar on it. We're gonna need that. Kaylin, I just heard that off of the coast of Italy, there's an island with five million Sicilian people on it, which is crazy because I think that's the biggest number I've ever heard. Of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. So you put the bar on and I'll hold it up. You got it? There we go. Oh, my rib just popped. I mean, my wrist just popped. Your rib just popped? <laughs> Was your way of saying my wrist just popped? <laughs> my rib just popped. <laughs> let me know let slowly. This... Can you move that? Yeah. Probably won't get it hung up on the drive shaft there. Just try it by hand. That's what I just said. There you go. Ah! There's a toad in here. Let's go ahead and cut it right here. We'll start stripping this out. These are fuel lines, I think, return lines. Vent lines, I don't know. Not gonna work here anymore anyway. <laughs> Northern Ohio. Junk. Just uh, keep cutting it into pieces where you can just slip it out of there easy. Since my power stroke is leaking like the Exxon Valdez, and I am tired of cleaning it up every time we move it, I've decided to empty the oil. And for those of you constantly telling me to wear my safety glasses, found my grandpa ones, so there you go. One eternity later. And when it comes to lefty loosey, it's this way. When it comes to righty tighty, it's this way. What's up guys? Just want to take a quick minute here to say thank you. Caitlin and I didn't start this channel to be uh, as big as it is today. And the truth of the matter is we're now recognizing there's a ton of more potential for growth. And to accomplish that, we know that we're gonna have to work hard to develop a loyal base of viewers and subscribers, and now channel members. And that's what I wanna talk to you about today. For buck 99, you can join the Shade Tree Nation here on YouTube as a channel member. And that's gonna give you access to behind the scenes footage a couple times a month. Uh, a monthly live stream with Caitlin and myself where we get to interact with you about ideas and concepts and thoughts on the work we're doing, thoughts on work we should be doing, things we should never do again. That would be helpful to know. Uh, and then we're also going to give you 15% off of all your purchases at CrossthreadGarage.com. In addition to that, the first 20 channel members are going to get a free t-shirt from Caitlin and I. The American by birth, Shade Tree Mechanic by Necessity, Shade Tree Nation T is going to come your way if you're one of those first 20 members. So click the button next to the subscribe button down below that says join and it will bill you through YouTube every month. 
and we would be so grateful for your participation here in the shop because without you guys, none of this really makes sense. So thanks. Out here in the Midwest, truck chassis age like a fine milk. They get uh, thin crust on top and eventually flakes off and then they turn to dust. So we're hoping to prevent that using some sweet patina rust preventative on this chassis. Now it has been hot and I mean hot here the last few weeks. I went to a car show the other day and I soft boiled my eyeballs. It was so hot outside and it's so stinking humid. It's enough to take the starch right out of your jammies. It's so hot. I went down to the creek the other day and saw a frog panting. Anyways, what I'm saying is it's been hot and we have not been working on this chassis as is the case with any good paint job. It's about 90% preparation and 10% blown paint all over it. So uh, we got all the tough stuff ahead of us here today. We're going to be wire wheeling this whole chassis. We're going to be cleaning it up with a paint stripper. We do not want to mess this one up, mostly because, well, I don't want to have to, you know, redo it. For all you mind readers out there, here's a question for you. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Well, you can see the difference there from start to finish on that time lapse just on this one section. And basically, if I can get the whole frame looking like that, I'm going to be pretty happy. You know, that's a two foot section right there. It took me about 10 minutes, so who knows how long it's going to take. But I do know this. I'm going to have to open the door, put a fan on in here to start moving some of this dust out because I don't want to be breathing rust when I'm 70. Well, we're making great progress here on the frame, but I was reminded of something a minute ago, and that is why I went ahead and did this work without Caitlin here today. It's not just that she wanted to be with her friends after a pretty busy summer, but uh, the old wire wheel snagged one of these bolt heads hanging out of the frame here, and uh, I ended up holding on to the cord while the thing danced around my calves. And uh, just an inherent level of risk involved in anything you're doing with a grinder. I don't need her with a wire splinter in her face or a big gash in her leg or something being damaged or broke. So the fact of the matter is, is uh, as much as I love using her like a rented mule out here in the garage, she's my kid and I love her, which reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses. John chapter 15, verse nine, as the father has loved me, so have I loved you. And those are Jesus's words. So we're getting back into this uh, painted part of the frame and I know that there are some heavy duty rust encapsulator products out there. And I think one may have been used on the back end of this frame. And I have hit that thing with a wire wheel, paint stripper. I even threw on the old flappy disc just to see what it would do. And it's really not cutting through any of it. I've reached out to Blake over at Sweet Patina with a question about whether or not I'm gonna have to get that off of there. If I have to go down to bare metal, can I just get it cleaned up, all the flakes and loose stuff off, degrease it, and paint it? Well, I've decided that this would all be a lot easier if uh, we were starting with a nice, clean, non-Midwest Ohio frame. 
But then, of course, uh, life would be easier if I was better looking. Look how far I've gotten looking like this. So uh, we're going to keep at it. But uh, Blake got back to me from Sweet Patina. And he says, uh, read the data sheet, dummy. <laughs> Actually, he didn't say that, but that's kind of how I felt after he sent me a picture of the data sheet. So basically, this, uh, this blackout rust preventative can be laid over top bare metal or a direct to metal paint epoxy primer. And I'm going to assume that this, as hard as this black stuff is back here, it's probably, it's actually probably POR15 or P-O-R-15. What do you guys say it? Let me know in the comments. Actually, you're going to spell it the same way, so <laughs> never mind. Idiot. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, guys, time to push this thing out of the garage. One, two, three. This works smarter, not harder. Let's get a chain and pull it out with the truck. <laughs> I know. Back it back up here. We'll hook but a chain. But what about all the, cat the kitties now? The cats are going to stay out of the way. They're fine. They're no, they're still babies. They don't know how to stay out of the way. They will stay out of the way or they'll learn a hard lesson. All right, go ahead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here, <laughs> here. Holy smokes. You need to come here and help me push this out. Push it that way. So we've made an executive decision here. We're only gonna paint the frame up to about right here. And that's because I've got to order a new um, trailing arm box here. We aren't going to be using this rusted out patched one. And these shock towers are going to need to be replaced, which means when we do that, uh, we're going to have to paint the frame up there anyways. So I think with it off, it'll be easier to actually just come in and paint the rest of this while Caitlin starts degreasing and we're using the uh, Get Gone degreaser first. She's going to clean the whole frame with that. I'm going to go ahead and torch this out of the back because I, I want to be able, I haven't right now, but I want to be able to get in here and clean this up. Uh, and that really needs means that this is going to have to get out of the way. So we're going to torch that out real quick. And then eventually we'll end up putting in probably like a square tube um, bolting it here and across there just to keep the back end from flapping around. I guess I'm just gonna cut it. We now have some cleanup to do inside this section of the frame, but we got what we needed. All right, we're mixing up this uh, Blackout rust preventative. I didn't have a paint stick, so I used an old door shim. Seems to work every time. Mm -hmm. So it's stir, don't shake, and it's a one, uh, it's like a 10% reduction. Not like it is actually a 10% reduction with this urethane reducer. We're gonna do 20 ounces first, which means we're gonna be doing 22 ounces uh, approximately. It's pretty humid here today, and it's a little warmer than I would like it to be. It's in the high 70s, so we're gonna hope that this dries quickly and we can get another coat on it here in a couple of hours, but, right. Quit sniffing stuff. It does need to dry between coats. It's, you don't tack up between coats, so we're gonna let it dry between coats. All right, guys, we're looking at uh, like eight to 10 PSI on the regulator. Nothing left to do but do it, right? what they say. I'm realizing now I should probably be doing the inside before I do the outside, huh? Probably. Sure, just get all dirty after I degrease it and everything. Oh, uh, yeah. Might have to wipe that. Good call.
Well, it's currently raining. Starting to rain anyways. An hour ago it said no rain, now it says rain. So, we're going to quickly get a coat on this, and if it rains, it rains, but at least we can push it back in the garage once we get a coat on it, and maybe put a coat on tomorrow. But I can already see water landing on top of it, so. We're going to finish this up real quick, Caitlin. Just kind of quick and dirty. So an hour ago, we checked the weather before we started painting, it said no rain in the forecast. It rained enough to get the entire driveway wet and has now, well, I guess it is spring a little bit, almost effectively stopped raining. So this is what we're left with. A frame that looks like the headliner of a Bentley all the twinkly stars on it. Actually, it's worse as you look out through there. I think we'll be able to go back just with a 3M pad, kind of scuff that once tomorrow, pull it back out, paint it again, and see what we can get done with it. So, did not see that coming. Too late now. <laughs> Correct. Too late now. <laughs> that is an accurate assessment. Later that same evening. All right, guys, we got some dry paint on the frame. I'm getting ready to paint a little bit more, but uh, it looks like uh, the old paint's all dried up and chunky. You're dried up and chunky. Oh, no, seriously. It's <laughs> and she's not wrong. So uh, we've got Caitlin's uncle Nick here. And uh, what else do you do when you have a world-class, master-class, GM certified tech with all the patches and stickers to prove it. You paint a frame. You paint a frame, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. Have a good sneeze. Oh, I hurt my back. Ah. Well, we basically treated Caitlin's truck like it's a hundred year old house. We painted all the windows shut, but in this case, we actually just painted over all the nuts and bolts. So that'll be, well, I guess it'll be your problem down the road, won't it? This is your truck. But I gotta tell you, I am pretty gruntled with this. Gruntled? Yeah. Gruntled. Yeah. Gruntled goat? No, gruntled. Gruntled what? I'm gruntled with it. It's not gruntled what? Is this a disease? What is no. this? No! It's a word. It's the opposite of disgruntled. If I were disgruntled, I would be dissatisfied, happy, unhappy, So you're just agitated. satisfied? No, so now I'm gruntled, which means I am satisfied, happy. I'm okay with it. It came out pretty nice. Undisgruntled. No, not... No. Pre-disgruntled. No. Pre-disgruntled would be like before you get disgruntled. Which would be satisfied, which is what you are. But I'm not disgruntled, I am gruntled. Which is pre-disgruntled. Okay. Before getting disgruntled. Listen. How do you spell that? T-H-A-T. -T. Ooh, you almost got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right guys, we're gonna let this cure up overnight and tomorrow morning, we're gonna set that cab on this frame and see how much of the firewall we've got to make disappear. Welcome back to the garage, everybody. I know you didn't go anywhere, but I did. Got some good sleep. Not a lot of it, but it was good. Kayla, not so much. So what we're gonna do here is swing the truck out of the way, pull the cab out, get the cab out underneath the gantry crane, get the cab in the air, swing the frame back, run it underneath, drop the cab, 
and just see how much life is gonna stink. Come back slowly and I'll step over the axle. Okay. Oh. Scream if you're getting ran over. Ah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. okay. You're on the body mount bolt over here. Just like by can you pick it up a little bit. Yep. Okay. Alright, come on backwards. Why is this actually working? This never works for us. Stop right there. Because I'm here. I want to get a couple of blocks of wood yeah. to put on this frame. Let's get some wood so we don't scratch everything up our first time we put it on there. That would be us. Yeah, that would be us. All right, well, you guys can see how close we're getting here. Um, the back of this cab is going to have to be up here. So we've got about six inches more we got to go. And you can see we don't exactly have six inches here, so. <laughs> Guys, I think in about two weeks we're going to be driving this out of here. So you don't think we can do it, Caitlin? Just needs squared up a little bit. What's happened? But. That's awesome. Funny that we thought this would go on. The inner fender liner is going to have to come out. Why are we setting it all this stuff? We're just kind of eyeballing the center line. look at it from this side this has got to come back five inches four inches to split that difference and this tab hole right here lines up with this tab clip here so if this came back four inches let's say it comes back four inches well then we're only seven inches back so we've only got to bring the cab forward seven more inches which I think that matches the measurement we had back here earlier with the back of this cab because that'll be right in front of that mount yeah so we got to come forward about seven inches is all but I like it I mean I'm gruntled with it Caitlin are you gruntled? I'm very gruntled. <laughs> oh man. I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're looking here and I can just tell you. Hey catch. I think we're gonna have enough room for a radiator. So even if this goes back four inches, we got plenty of room for a radiator. Worst case scenario, we ditch the big fan and we go with an electric fan. So in that fancy. case, we've got a ton of room for the radiator, intercooler, all that stuff. So I'm feeling real good about this. Honest answer, first impression. What do you think? Um, I like the height. Yeah. The cab's got kind of a, kind of running downhill, but we can level that up when we scoot it forward. Looks like a monster truck. It's gonna look awesome. We're not gonna have to do a ton of work to that trans tunnel. Might have to move a little bit more of it, but 
I'm feeling real good about the way this is fitting. So, for all you naysayers out there who said it wouldn't work, you're probably still right. There's, there's going to be a problem we find soon that's going to keep us from doing this exactly the way we wanted to. But for now, man, can't argue with that, can you? Well, they definitely could. Are you excited? Yeah. I think that the, uh, the fun part is going to be figuring out just exactly how we get this there and up. But uh, that's going to be an episode for another day. But before we go, I'm going to throw in a little clip here of Blake from Sweet Patina while we were at the Good Guys Car Show this weekend, talking through a couple of his products that you guys really should be paying attention to. Purchasing at SweetPatina.com and using promo code CGS5 for 5% off all your orders there. Thanks much, and we'll see you next time. So oh, this is one of the, the cars that's on display here at the Sweet Patina booth. So Blake's going to show us around. What uh, what products is he using that, that you guys have? So on Dallas Barron's uh, AD Suburban here, this truck is being cleaned up with our Sweet Patina products and polished with our Century Polish. Then once he gets to the show and he just wants to make sure it's nice and clean, Dallas uses our Happy Ending Detail Spray. We've used that a couple of times this season for local shows we've been to. It's really good stuff. Actually, everything you get from this guy is worth buying. There isn't a single product that we've had that hasn't done more than I thought it was going to do, especially the TKO hand wipes. If you guys were wondering just how good these Sweet Patina hand wipes are, Pretty good. You got to get yourself some so TKO hand wipes. The, the TKO hand wipes actually help remove some gum out of the carpet in this uh, Suburban. He so uses he, our cleaners for the white walls. Is he in Ohio? Yeah, he's local here to Columbus. Cool. So you can see all the stitching, all the carpets, the diamond stitch all the way through the door panels. Look, here's his product. Here's I our like product that. right here. Happy ending and the sticky icky tire shine. The tire, tire renew. Shine. Now we haven't tried the tire shine. Actually, I just oh, saw that over here for the first time. So that's a non-silicone tire shine. So it's body shop safe. It's not going to leave that greasy, uh, you know, stuff that's going to just fly all over the yeah. side of the vehicle. Again, you can look at what Dallas did. He, he put it on these, even with the white walls. It's just going to give you a tire, like a renewed look, not so much like a high gloss. Hmm. Love it. Love these advanced design trucks. Obviously, our, 40, our 47 Chevy is the uh, same era. He's not here so to open his hood. Is, so. this, is this clear coated or is this polished? No, so this was polished. This is just polished, guys. Yep. You can this get a is... finish like that without having to clear coat it. You definitely don't have to use that wipe on clear coat junk from Poppy's Patina. <laughs> Why don't you show us a few of the uh, products here for guys that are looking at undercoating, frame care, all that stuff. All right. So right here, uh, we have our blackout rust preventative coating. This is very popular for the guys that are going in and they're doing floor pan repairs. They want to coat the whole floor to prevent the rust from coming back. Uh, they're coating their chassis in it. No primer is required. Uh, we just try to stress that you need to prep. You need to make sure you're using the degreaser. We have our Get Gong degreaser. Then we have our wax and grease remover. Uh, if and you, you sell all that in a kit, comes, yep, right? Yep, all, all of it comes in a kit. Uh, you can brush it on, you can roll it on, or you can spray it. If you're going to spray it, you're going to have to add our urethane reducer right. like here. Said, and that's uh, what we're doing this week. We're going to be spraying it on with the reducer. Yep. And uh, and like I said, the prep is the big thing. You want to make sure you really scuff those pans so it'll have something to adhere to. Is this the same product? Yep. That's, a, that's an old floor pan. Uh, we've had it sitting out here at the shows for probably two years now. But it's a, it's an old floor pan with the blackout on it. And what if you've got something you don't want a shiny coat on? You wanna... So this is our blackout coating that we were just talking about. And then this side over here is our uh, the GOAT paintable rubberized undercoat. That's straight out of an aerosol can. Shake it up really good, give it heck, and then spray it from about 18 to 24 inches out. You get a nice matte finish textured coating. Damn. Now. If you wanted to go even further with the surface protection, sound dampening, temperature control, we have our N1 textured coating. Our N1 textured coating is sprayed from a 
It's sprayed from the Schutz gun. If you don't know what those are, these mount or these screw directly onto the right. can. So once you mix your activator in, shake it up, screw this on the top, give it some air. And is all that uh, or some of that tintable? You can get. Yep. So we have the N1 coating available in tintable. You just add three ounces of solvent toner. We have white or we have black. Okay. And you can buy these individually if you're going to be doing like a firewall only. But if you're going to be doing a um, like the full underside of a, yeah. of a cab or the bed liner, then we have it in a kit. And if you buy the kit, the gun comes in it free. Okay, cool. I'm thinking we're going to be using something like this on the bottom side of your cab, Caitlin. If not, if not the bottom side, at least the interior floor, because I don't know what we're going to end up using. It might end up being just a bare metal floor for a while once we get it put together. We'll but, get it coated with something good. Yeah. And then, of course, the TKO hand cleaning wipes. Some of you guys may see online where we sell our TKO hand cleaning wipes with the degreaser and the skeet spray, which we'll talk about in a second. But that's our rescue kit. So if you're out junk, uh, junkyard hopping or pulling cars and uh, rescuing old classics, you want to have these three in the, in the car with you. Uh, the abrasive hand cleaning wipes, those are good for removing paint, dirt, grit, grime, brake dust, oil, it doesn't matter. Uh, these are great to have on hand in your automobiles too if you get gas on you at the gas station or something. Um, the Skeet Spray has been super popular too. It's a freezing penetrating lubricant. So as you're spraying the rusty nuts and bolts or hinges on the doors or the hoods, uh, you're able to spray it and it'll concentrate on that area and it'll kind of sizzle and it'll kind of stay in place versus a lot of the penetrating lubricants, you're going to spray them and they splatter I've everywhere. I've noticed right? that this stuff doesn't <laughs> splash and it doesn't run a lot. Like it won't, you spray it here, it's not gonna run all the way down and just land yep. on the ground. And, and after use, it'll keep that part, uh, those threads and all lubricated to where it'll be easier yeah. to, to use the product. Um, then if you're not familiar, we have our car detail products. So these are gonna be, all of these products are gonna be ready to spray products. They're um, non-caustic car wash soap. So this is gonna be your wash and shine, which would be like, kind of like your wash and wax type soaps. This is my favorite soap. We do have the citrus bubbly, which is a basic car wash soap. We got the degreaser we talked about over here. Our all-purpose cleaner. It's which just we love that truly stuff. amazing oh, yeah. for anything. That stuff um, smells. Ammonia-free car wash. I mean, uh, glass cleaner. Uh, the silicone-free. Yesterday. <laughs> yep, this is a silicone-free uh, tire renew, like we talked about. It's not going to leave that high gloss, oily, sticky stuff everywhere yeah. that flies all over. Won't coat your fenders as you drive yep. down the road. And our happy ending detail wipe. This is a polymer-based detail wipe, so you can actually use this on gloss finishes, satin finishes, matte, patina. It, it doesn't matter what the finish is. Yeah. You can even do your windows with yeah. this stuff. This is a great, great detail wipe. Um, and it can be used as a quick detailer. A lot of guys right. think it's got to be put in our patina care kit. It doesn't have to be. You can use this as a waterless, you know, um, quick detailer. Yep. And then we have our superior interior. So all these guys that are taking these classics out of the fields or out of the barns, we recommend that they clean it really well in the inside with the so fresh and clean. And then you can wipe it down with your superior interior. So then we get over to our patina care products. And this is where the brand really stands out amongst the rest. Uh, we're able to protect and preserve the patina finishes without a permanent coating. Therefore, you see a lot of these guys that they've clear coated over patinas or yep. surface rest. And within a couple years, you'll start to see it starting to lift, lose its adhesion, and then you got a peeling mess on your hands. Uh, again, prep is everything with any of these products that we're talking about. But we have our patina sauce. Like I said, it's an old base patina preserver, proprietary blend of over 20 ingredients. Uh, it is an oil base, so you do have to reapply it periodically and maintain the finish. But again, the benefit of it is you never have to worry about peeling, streaking, running, flaking, any of that kind of stuff. If you wanted to paint the vehicle later, you can remove this with a degreaser, wax right. and grease remover, follow the correct steps for your paint prep, and you can spray a clear coat or you can spray and that's, um, that's base. huge. Now, now for the guys that want to go permanent with the gloss or the matte or the satin clear coats, we have those that are sprayable and they're right. 2K high UV inhibitors. Uh, we'll go over those here in a second. So what we like to do is tell people to use the patina sauce and then they maintain it with the happy ending detail wipe like we discussed on the other side, it's a quick spray detailer. If the patina sauce doesn't give you the, the gloss that you're looking for, then we use our century polish. So this is a polish that is specific to old lacquer, single stage, 
uh, paint. You can see in the before and after picture here how much of a gloss you get, and yeah. you saw the Suburban. Yeah, it was, the Suburban is just unreal. So, yeah, we sell it. We sell the Trio kit, and then we also sell it with the polish if you wanted more of like a shinier finish. Yeah. Um, again, if, if you want to go with a permanent coating, uh, we do sell the matte clear coats. This one clear coat right here can mix three different ways to give you a flat, uh, eggshell, or some people call it satin, or you can get a semi-gloss. So all you're doing here is you're mixing your activator either four, five, or six to one to get the finish that you want. You got a lot of products out there that if you want a satin, they try to tell you, oh, we'll take, you know, X amount of the, the matte and mix it with X amount of the right. gloss. Right. And then it's kind of a guessing game yep. if you ever got to blend it or, half or half use it. Half gives you satin, right? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> so yeah, here here's uh here's the matte clear coat. We sell this to a lot of high end shops that are doing like you know the matte finishes right. over the the paint and base coat. If you wanted more of the high gloss, the wet look as they call it, we do sell the glamour clear coat. It comes in a kit where we sell the reducer and the activator together. That's a two to one mix there. So you're going to get a super high gloss wet finish uh, that's going to last. Um, now we have a lot of guys in the patina world that they're rebuilding cars and they are trucks and they want to keep that natural look or the factory look under the hood. Uh, so this is where you're going to get your matte blacks. Again, these are single stage uh, paints. So you can do it in the matte black or if you want a little bit more of a sheen, we sell it in the satin black. Again, you can do this engine bays, interiors, or we sell it to a lot of the traditional hot rod guys that want the, the hot rod the exterior black. Look. Yeah. Is that UV? Yes. Resistant as yes. well. Yep, it'll withstand you know everything, and we have it in different colors too. These are just the main ones we we carry at the shows. Yeah. So. Cool. But yeah, we got you covered there, and then you still going? Yep. And then uh, if you're wanting to get a little crazy, we also carry Ace of Shades. Uh, Ace of Shades, you're going to be able to get your uh, solid base, pearl base, metallic base, candy base. Uh, if you're into doing the the heavy metal flake jobs. We have the Ace Invader that you can mix with the Disco Dust, give it a good uh, spray out, and then put your clear over the top of that. We got the Candy Drops, which is like a candy intensifier. <laughs> but uh, we can help you guys go from the rust on the bottom of your frame, or the rust on your frame, all the way to candy and flake jobs now. Wow. Everything in between, if it's coating and refinishing, we're trying to help you guys do it yeah. with the right products. Well, it's a one-stop shop. You guys can get anything you need. Doesn't matter what you're driving. Blake's got it for you. So make sure you check out sweetpatina.com. Use that promo code CGS5 for 5% off any order. And uh, we get a little bit of kickback on that on our next order from him. So we appreciate you guys using that code for us. So yeah, that's right. thanks, man. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Glad good to see, to see you. all. Yeah. <laughs>